Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another in our ongoing series of webcam conversations with executives who are looking at the future of technology and how it affects the way people live their digital lives. We're very fortunate today to connect with uh, Vince Pizica. He's the CTO, the Chief Technology Officer and Head of Strategy for Technicolor, and we caught up to him today to uh, to help us understand a little bit about what's going on in Australia where they have a major broadband initiative going uh, to uh, to help ensure that the best decisions are made to connect all of the population in an effective manner. Vince, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. No problem. It's good to talk to you. Perhaps you can start by by uh, explaining a little bit, telling us a little bit of the backstory uh, of, of what's going on with broadband in Australia and what are the, some of the options that are available today as they pursue their, their objectives. You know, Australia has, has been uh, an, an interesting little obs uh, place for us all to observe the importance of broadband to the growth of a society and its community infrastructure. So, so much of what... Um, Today we expect in terms of access to media and entertainment, access to services, government services, social entertainment, etc. It's all coming from broadband and, and that puts more and more pressure on broadband infrastructure to be faster and more affordable and to meet the needs of, of these emerging new services. And Australia's taken the decision to, to provide that in, a, in a, something more like a utility infrastructure, something that, um, that all service providers of, of um, of the basic services themselves can take advantage of and to extend it to the whole uh, of the as much as possible of the Australian geographic footprint which is hugely challenging because of the, the scale and the size but they're also uh, you know, interestingly moving into a model where they accept the, the multiple different types of technology that will need to be adopted um, as, um, as a part of deploying this infrastructure this broadband infrastructure for the nation and um, I think that's an interesting recognition of the fact that at different points in time, different technologies are moving at different paces of innovation. There's different physical infrastructures that need to be to be put in place, and and so Australia is this nice little melting pot of of all the different types of infrastructures that you use for a broadband infrastructure. Um, they've they've come to a conclusion that they want to pursue a broadband strategy that's based on the uh, on this DOCSIS, this data over cable technology, and uh, it's. It's been an issue because they had initially uh, looked into pursuing a fiber to the home uh, strategy. Uh, perhaps you can sort of give us a little bit of the, uh, uh, the, the analysis of the differences between these two technologies and then we can sort of perhaps understand why they've elected at this point to pursue this DOCSIS strategy. Yeah, well, my understanding of the Australian environment is that using they are using a blend of different technologies, fiber to the node and, and, and fiber, uh, taking advantage of the pretty good HFC footprint that exists in the cities of Australia. Fibre to the home um, has a certain uh, attractiveness because of the high bandwidths that you can get across it, um, but you have the disadvantage that you have to put new lead-ins, you know, run, run, dig up dirt in people's front yards and drill new holes in their homes and things like that, and it ends up being an expensive part of the proposition, let alone the capital cost of the, the fibre and its equipment. When you've already got a piece of coax running into someone's home, and that Coax is shielded and it can deliver a lot more bandwidth um, over shorter lengths um, than, than just a pair. It's good to be able to take advantage of that technology and to be able to use it to get gigabits per second speeds in that access leg. You don't have to dig up the ground uh, to use it. <clears throat> and DOCSIS 3.1 is a tremendous technology uh, that, that actually provides all of the advantages of the internet uh, across the access network that historically we found fiber co and fiber co Fiber coax networks have struggled to to, to also match uh, to the, the similar types of um, architectures that have existed in fiber in uh, fiber to the home networks. So here we have all of the elements for a very scalable, very open business model um, across the, uh, you know, a DOCSIS 3.1. And so it's wise for the Australian government and the uh, NBN to uh, to take advantage of, of the fiber coax network. DOCSIS 3.1 technology now is is already demonstrating in the field how effective it is. Consumers that are experiencing it's at fantastic speeds. Um, we've got experiences in different markets of the world um, uh, of, of how that's working. We've even got our, our product available in Australia. You know, it's sitting there um, uh, in our labs and, and we, we can show that the DOCSIS 3.1 is very real here and now. Um, but I think it is also a future-proof technology because it does have that internet OTT friendliness to it. It's designed to be as similar to an ethernet um, uh, internet friendly architectures you can get in the cable, cable world. And you just get so much bandwidth um, from, from the architecture. 
And in terms of availability and its ability to uh, be rapidly deployed, um, tell me a little bit about what's involved in that. Uh, uh, DOCSIS 3.1 is the most recent version of the standard. Uh, it, what, are the, what are the backward compatibility issues and how quickly can that be deployed over the current infrastructure? The, the DOCSIS 3.1 uh, technology is obviously compatible with the previous versions of, of, of the DOCSIS uh, format. So DOCSIS 3 infrastructure will support the DOCSIS 3.1 modem, but that, that, that's okay. Um, in fact, it's probably better to go that path and roll out the cake. If you've got the modems in your hands, which you can have, um, get them out there in the consumer sense as quick as possible because then you don't have to go back and upgrade them once you do upgrade the infrastructure. Um, and of course that takes time. Up upgrading infrastructure can take a bit longer. Um, there's a lot of work involved. You're actually out there on the street with uh, equipment and, and uh, that takes a bit longer. But when you're putting product in the consumer's home, um, DOCSIS 3.1 modems are available now. So closing thoughts and final comments on, 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 on where, where we ought to be landing in terms of, uh, of getting this out. What, what are the timelines? When do you think we can expect uh, uh, to see uh, the kind of uh, connectivity that we're talking about? And what are the uh, new services that that will generate opportunities for the industry and for consumers? You know, I, look, I think um, <clears throat> DOCSIS 3.1 uh, services can be available in a market as early as next year, early next year for deployment. Um, that's it. Really comes down to the particular circumstances of any particular deployment. Um, but the services are a much more exciting thing. You know, I think that's the, the one thing that at Technicolor we're very uh, confident of is that the growth of entertainment services in particular, but it's a range of services, whether it's health or uh, education or, or training or you know, the, you know the, the list of business model opportunities that exist out there to take advantage of broadband just are never ending and I don't need to go on with that but we at a technical are very excited about entertainment whether it's more bandwidth being used for, for bigger high resolution images getting more immersive video experiences from high dynamic range or color gamuts to take advantage of the, the screens that you're on um, having Virtual reality services uh, that you know a, a year or so ago we would have said virtual reality. You're kidding, but you know really already we are starting to see virtual reality uh, consumer services, uh, and and uh, you know you need to have a fast lo fast low latency network, uh, which is what you can get from from these DOCSIS networks to be able to really get the best possible experience in, from those virtual reality services, and that might have once seemed like a a bit of a fantasy lane, but there's there's real services out there today, and they're only going to continue to grow. And by the way, you know that's we talk about um, old HD being 4K versus HD being 2K. Well, to get into a, a real virtual reality service, you've got to get to uh, 8K per eye, <laughs> which is extremely high resolution, extremely um, high levels of bandwidth required. So um, the demands on our broadband infrastructure is going to continue to grow, and that's exciting from an entertainment perspective. Outstanding. Well. Vince, thank you very much for taking the time to chat. I appreciate your insights. Thank you. It's fun being fun.